So I read some real gems within the month of January. Let's talk about those. I think about these characters all the time. Even though it is lengthy, these people really do stick with you. She's a thick one. And I'm very excited though to get into this. I have a bit of an unpopular opinion and that I do not like Violet's character. That's kind of a unique thing also that I do is I'm not just a romance reader, a fantasy reader, a nonfiction reader. I love sprinting around different genres. How's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenna, if you're new here. Today I want to talk about books, specifically the ones that I read in January, what my annual reading goal is, as well as the books that I am currently reading, and what's next up on my to be read list. So let's get into it. First, my annual goal for the year of 2024 is roughly to read at the pace of a book a week. I know a lot of people are faster than this. A lot of people can be slower. Personally, for me, I am juggling a lot of priorities in life. So as much as I want to be even more of a bookworm, reading more than 52 books a year, I think 52 is a good number. It's more than I read last year. It is a steady pace to try to keep up with one per week. And then if I read more than that, then it will be a pleasant surprise. But right now that seems to be a really doable pace for myself. So I read four books within the the month of January and I'm paced to finish five by February so nine books total within the first two months of the year so I read some real gems within the month of January let's talk about those the first one is the final gambit by Jennifer Lynn Barnes and I read things we left behind by Lucy score after that I read mad honey by Jodi Pico and then I rounded out the month with the Paris apartment by Lucy Foley now my favorite book for the month of January was actually things we left behind now that was the third book with in the Knock 'em Out trilogy. So it is a trilogy about a small rural town in Virginia. Each one is a standalone story, but it has to do with the same characters within that town. So it's a romance read and I really enjoyed this book, but I wanna talk about each of these reads in order. So let's start first with The Final Gambit. So The Final Gambit was also the third book in a series. It was the third book in the Inheritance Games series. When I first picked this up, I thought it was going to be more along the lines of a Hunger Games-esque type book. And it was nothing close to that. It was more so, a complicated, ever-shifting family tree that is based in Texas, and it deals a lot with inheritance, with money, with this overarching mystery that needs to be solved about why this main character, Avery, was given the inheritance, millions and millions of inheritance, for a man she has never met. And so it centers around her trying to solve this mystery. She's very smart and savvy, along with the brothers that are the grandsons of the man who passed away and handed Avery his inheritance. So it was a fascinating series. I believe it is YA, which you can tell, but it felt kind of more like a PG murder mystery type book series but I actually really enjoyed it. It was a different change of pace. It wasn't what I expected but I give this series in general all the books fell within kind of a 3.5 to 4 stars. The final gambit I would give maybe 3.75 maybe right at 4 stars because I thought it was a really good conclusion to the series. I was really happy with where it went and where it ended. It seemed appropriate to end the way that it did and I felt like the loose ends were tied up where they needed to be tied up and the mystery was just engaging enough to keep you entertained without being overly complicated and losing you. So I really enjoyed this series. It just definitely wasn't what I expected based on the covers of the book. The next read was Things We Left Behind. I read this on Kindle. Now these books are very hefty, probably one of the reasons why it took me a while to finish this one. I was reading it for maybe two months 
and this book though was so good even though these novels are longer they really do capture you in this story of this rural town in Virginia and specifically this trilogy each book focuses on the love story of different characters within this town so the first one is Knox and Naomi's love story she goes by the nickname Daisy in that book the second one is Nash and Lena and then the third one is Sloane and Lucian's love story so I think I was most excited to read about this story given that their relationship was this at odds relationship arguing and you can tell that there's a backstory you can tell that there's tension but you have been guessing for now two other books what their story was so my main critique is how long you're strung along trying to guess what is this backstory because even reading this book you don't learn it until maybe 65 percent of the way through you don't actually get into the meat of what they went through as teenagers and I though wasn't disappointed by this read. I really enjoyed it. Of the three, my favorite is actually Lena and Nash's love story. I feel like the dynamics there were the most healthy of any of the couples. They seemed the most balanced and well-rounded as characters. All in all, I love this series. I think about these characters all the time. Even though it is lengthy, these people really do stick with you. So I really enjoyed this series. I would give this book a four-star rating because of how intrigued I was, even though it was lengthy. It's one of those where it's just kind of like a feel-good type rom-com. So it isn't an urgent page turner, but whenever you open it, you're like, I'm going to sit in a little bubble bath with a glass of wine and really enjoy this. Then the third book I knew nothing about before picking it up. And I should have kind of known because I read a previous work by Jodi Pico before and it was Wish You Were Here and I really did not enjoy that novel. I felt like it was all over the place. I couldn't understand what it was doing, the point it was making, because it was hitting on so many different topics and traumas. And with that heavy load that the book was carrying, it didn't seem like the story, the plot, the character development could support the weight of the issues it was trying to bring up. Now, in that same vein, I feel like Mad Honey was doing a similar thing where it was bringing on this massive weight of all of these different topics and traumas. It dealt with, you know, the validity of the U.S. judicial system. It dealt with gender identity primarily. It dealt with domestic violence very heavily. It dealt with self-harm. It dealt with bullying. And all of these topics were so heavy and you're trying to really connect with these characters but again like Wish You Were Here did I didn't feel as though the story was strong enough the character development was deep enough to carry the weight of the trauma issues that they're packing into these pages so unfortunately it did fall flat for me I would give it a two-star rating within that zone as I did with Wish You Were Here and I think it's just this author and her style doesn't really meld well with the kind of reader I enjoy being. So unfortunately, that was kind of a miss for the month. And the fourth book I read was actually The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I expected a lot less from this book. I noticed that on Goodreads, it didn't have a very high rating. Usually I look to see if books are above a four star rating and then I know it's going to feel good or worth worthwhile. And if it's below that, then I kind of expect to be disappointed. So that is how I walked into the Paris apartment feeling is that, okay, I'm probably going to be disappointed by this. Now, it exceeded those expectations. I do actually rate it along with the majority rules rating on Goodreads. I gave it a 3.5 stars but it was way more fascinating than I thought it was going to be. I was intrigued by the story. There were certain things that I feel like it was lacking and part of that was it does kind of string you along. I think Lucy Foley has this writing style with her suspenseful reads where she'll describe something that's alarming or scary like I feel like I was being watched and then I saw these two beady eyes staring at me and you're like oh my Atlanta and then you're reading this and then she's like but then the cat's tail knocked down the thing it was like just the cat 
So I feel like just as you're starting to get into those suspenseful moments, then the suspense kind of halts and then you realize, oh, okay, it's not really that scary after all. And so her suspenseful books aren't really that suspenseful. So I guess that is my largest critique of it is that you are curious to kind of solve this mystery along with these characters, but you aren't really intimidated by any of the characters, if that makes sense. So I was though guessing until the very end, I did not guess what became the eventual outcome. It did catch me by surprise. And for that reason, I really enjoyed it and wasn't really expecting to. So with all of these books, I do actually write reviews on my Goodreads account. If you like to read longer descriptions of book reviews, I usually do about a paragraph per book, or at least I'm starting to within this year of 2024. I like to decompress in that way. So if you're curious and you want to read those reviews as I give them, you can follow me and friend me on Goodreads. I will paste my link down below so that we can connect there and talk books. Okay, so let's talk about now the books that I am currently reading and the books that are coming up on my TBR. So one of the books I'm currently reading is The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. This I decided to read after Crown of Midnight and before Queen of Shadows. That's what I was told. I apologize if that is not the correct way, but so I was aware of Sam's existence and what he means to Selena before I opened this. And so I know how he dies, but I have not read yet how he dies. I have just finished the part where she leaves the desert after Ansel's whole blow up situation. She's a little bit cray cray, <laughs> didn't realize that but I am enjoying this so far. I'm about 50% of the way through. Another book that I am reading is The Gap and the Gain. This is a nonfiction read and that's kind of a unique thing also that I do is I'm not just a romance reader, a fantasy reader, a nonfiction reader. I love sprinting around different genres. So right now I am reading this per a recommendation by one of my coworkers. It is super good. I am struggling though to pick it up because I often like to listen to nonfiction during the workday or as an audiobook. I don't like to read it physically as much as I do fantasy. This I usually don't want to pick up when I'm off on my workday. So I've been having a hard time getting through this, but I am really enjoying it so far. And then the third book I'm reading is also for work. It's called Unreasonable Hospitality, and we're all reading it as part of our strategy team's little book club that we have going on. So I'm listening to that on Libby right now. Up next is Magic Hour by Kristen Hanna. I adore Kristen Hanna. The Nightingale is one of my all-time favorite books. And I don't know though what this book is about. I just know how much I love her as an author. And so this one is going to be coming up soon. After that, and after I finish The Assassin's Blade, we have Queen of Shadows. She's a thick one. And I'm very excited though to get into this because I loved Crown of Midnight so much. The Assassin's Blade is hard to really get into because it's these little novellas. So you get into a story and characters and then it's like, shoop new story, new characters, shoop, new story, new characters. Whereas this will be a continuation of her and Rowan's story. So I cannot wait to continue to see how that plays out. So very excited for this. And then naturally I'm behind on the train of this one, but Iron Flame is coming up very shortly. I actually listened to Fourth Wing as an audiobook because it was right before it really exploded and it was interesting and I noticed it was on Libby so I ended up listening to it as an audiobook but then I got both of the hard covers after Iron Flame came out so I am very excited for this one and to see that ending that is driving people insane we'll see we'll see how this ends but I have a bit of an unpopular opinion and that I 
do not like Violet's character. I cannot stand her actually. I find her inner monologue to be very frustrating. And I think that that is because I was listening to the audiobook. So I was thinking it was probably just the narrator that I was getting frustrated with. But then my friend said that if I already didn't like her in Fourth Wing, I probably am not going to like her in Iron Flame either. So we'll see. We'll see how I feel about Violet after reading this still. So that is all for my January book recap and the books that are coming up down the pipeline very shortly here. I love talking books, so please do put any recommendations of reads I should be putting on my coming TBRs very shortly or any thoughts that you had about either the books that I have read or am going to read or are currently reading. So let's start a conversation. Did you like any of the books that I disliked or vice versa? Let's talk about it. I am so grateful though that you watched this video. If you liked it, please remember to give it a little thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel for content that might be similar to this in the future. I cannot wait to catch you in the next video. Bye friends.